What's up everybody, Average Joe here. Today's video, we're gonna be doing an update on the 48 volt lithium iron phosphate Condor Elite 3. And we're gonna be answering one of the most common questions that I get for this battery, which is, can you run a stove, air conditioning, and dryer? All right, so let's get into it. Okay, so, Okay, so first thing, if you're not aware, Big Battery did send this battery to me a few months ago to basically test out and review. So I've been pretty much using it every single day with my off-grid setup pretty much ever since I got it, which was about four months ago. And as of today, I've done 60 complete cycles on the battery. All right, so just a quick little side note on the 60 cycles and four months, it doesn't really add up. All right, so there are those days when it is completely cloudy out and the battery will be drained down. There's no sun to recharge it. So during those days, I'll go back on grid until the sun comes back out and recharges the battery. So anyway, like I said, I've had it for about four months and I've done 60 complete cycles and I'll just get it out of the way real quick is I've had absolutely zero problems using it here at my house how we use it, okay? Another little thing that I'll let you know is I also have two other big batteries from Big Battery. One is a 14 kilowatt hour Rhino battery and the other one is a five kilowatt hour Husky battery. I've got three batteries from them and I parallel all three together even though they're all different kilowatt hour ratings, okay? <gasps> it's a little over 30 kilowatt hour worth of battery storage, all right? And at this current moment in time, I'm powering my entire house minus the stove, air conditioning, and dryer. That's a wiring issue on my end. I'll take care of it here soon. Having 30 kilowatt hours worth of battery storage, at least for a day-to-day -day basis, powering everything 24-7, it's overkill. However, on the flip side is if it is cloudy for a couple of days, I have a couple of days of autonomy. You know, I don't have to worry about anything. And then hopefully by the third day, we do get sun and we can charge back up. If not, I'll just go back on grid. Another good thing about having the three days worth of battery is if there's a crazy storm and it knocks out the power, I can keep on cruising no problem, which has actually happened a few times and the power's gone out, we didn't even know. The only reason we knew is because the neighbors across the street called over and asked why we still have power. Like I said, 30 kilowatt hours is kind of overkill for me. We do have just a little over five kilowatt of used solar panels on the roof and I just set up two little ground mount arrays over here on the side of my house. So typically how it goes here at my house is Sun goes down or at least gets off of the solar panels, we'll say right around seven o'clock p.m. From then on, we run straight on battery pretty much until the next day, until the sun comes up and starts recharging the batteries. I don't get full sun on any of my panels until about noon because I've got a crap ton of trees in the back. In an average 24 hour time span, overnight we might get down to like 65 or 70 percent and then like i said in the daytime we charge right back up to 100 percent so i don't even always get to do a complete cycle i think how the bms in these how they kind of count a cycle is you have to go down below 30 percent and then recharge back up above 70 percent i'm not 100 percent sure on that but i think that's how it works so on an average day i don't even get below we'll just say 60 percent so I technically have a lot more cycles on there. They're just kind of like quarter cycles, if that makes sense. Now, I know we don't really push it to its limits or anything like that because, well, it's a storage battery. That's not what you do with a storage battery. You don't push it to its limits, which we're going to do today. Alrighty, enough of that. The next portion of the video is going to be answering the age old question. Can we run air conditioning, stove or dryer? I don't know. Let's find out. Before we do, there's a few things you should know. I'm going to shut off all of the solar so we don't have anything coming in from there to help us out. And obviously I'm going to disconnect the other two batteries. And then third, I just got to flip some circuit breakers around so we can route power, you know, around. All right, so let me do that and then we'll get right to it. Down here, here's the wire for the Husky battery and here's the wire for the Rhino battery. So right now we are currently only running on 
the Condor Elite 3. I was just going to show you the menu and the phone here just to make sure you all know that we're there's no lies or anything like that. So we're drawing 10.7 amps, 10.7 amps right over here. 98%, 98%. At this current amp draw, we have roughly 20 hours and 33 minutes to go. If we go to status, you can see we've done 60 cycles, like I said earlier today. That's pretty much all you probably want to see. Those are all the cell voltages, etc. Alrighty, to get this party started, we're going to start with the dryer. I do have to leave the phone over here because the Bluetooth won't reach that far. But either way, I will leave it up on the screen so we can all see it. So my dryer back here is a Whirlpool Cabrio. And inside the door, we have the sticker with the model number and how much power it could draw. So we could draw up to 26 amps. All right, so can it run a dryer? All right, so turn it on. It's on time dry and the heat setting is on high. Here we go. Yes, yes it can. All right, over here, oh, I just missed it. All right, here it goes. All righty, so on the display, we're showing 130, 132 amps, roughly. And it looks like we can do a full cycle of, you know, a 50 or 60 minute dry cycle because it shows one hour and 39 minutes until it's empty. However, I think that is gonna be a little bit longer because the drying heating elements do turn on and off. So we'll get a little bit more runtime. All right, so it can run a dryer, no problem. All righty, upstairs, we're gonna see if we can run this stove right here. It has five burners and two ovens. We open up the door right here. You can see the sticker right here and the model number. And this can draw up to 15.4 kilowatt. No, we cannot run all five burners and both ovens. That's, that's ridiculous. My inverter can't even do that. And of course the battery can't even do that. Battery can do 7,000. 500 watts. All right, but we can at least turn on a couple of burners at least up to the 7,500 watt mark. Uh, maybe we can go over that just a little bit because we do have the 350 amp uh, surge for around six seconds that that battery can do. All right, first one is this burner right here. We're just going to go straight to high. And obviously it's doing one burner, no problem and we are drawing 3,800 watts. So it can do that, no problem. We'll go with the rear burner back here, straight on high. And now we're up to 5,500 watts or 105 amps. All right, and it does that, no problem. I'm gonna switch sides over here and we'll go to this big burner right up here. We'll just go straight to high and we're drawing 10,000 watts. So we can't do that for very long. <laughs> uh, let me go back to the small burner back here and see what we got. All right, so that is 7,200 and, well, 7,250 watts roughly. So we can do that, no problem. I kind of want to, I want to adjust some of these and see if we can get both of these big burners on. See what that does. All right, so there's 7,300. So we can do that, no problem. So if you're cooking or whatever, you're only gonna wanna do two burners because if you go much higher than that, you're going to shut it off, all right? So I'm going to turn off that burner right there. That one is still on. I'm going to turn on the lower oven and we'll just go 350 and see what that gets us at. All right, so we're drawing basically 7,000 watts. And keep in mind, we're also running, you know, the rest of my house. All right, so that's 7,000 watts, no problem. Let me just uh, tap on one of these real quick, see what it goes to. That's 8,000 watts, 87. All right, if I keep going, it's gonna shut off the house. So that's the only reason I'm shutting it off. Okay, so can you run a stove? Yes, you can. Now also keep in mind, whenever you're running at this wattage right here, you're not gonna get a whole lot of runtime. You're probably gonna get like, oh, I don't know, almost two hours. 
However, the burners are going to kick on and off, so you know you could get a little bit longer runtime. All right, so there you go. We can run an oven, no problem. And we're going to drop back down to 620, 600 watts. That's what my house is running off of. Nice. So outside, this is a four ton champion air compressor. Okay, if we want to look at the specs real quick. So there is the model number. Again, I looked it up online. This is a four ton air conditioning. And if you look at the compressor and cooling fan amp draw right over there, we can pull up to 130 amps. That is ridiculous. And then the running amps, I think it's around 19.5. That's just for the compressor only. The cooling fan only draws about 1.3 amps. All right, so this thing is a beast. At least if you're trying to do it, you know, off grid or off battery and solar and stuff like that. And remember the locked rotor amps is massive. So uh, I don't know if this is gonna work. It's probably gonna dim the lights a lot if it does work. We're just gonna go down to 67 and see what happens. Oh, look at that. It did do it. Wow, nice. The lights did dim just a little bit there, but it did do it. And the inverter made a little bit of a ain't noise, but damn, we did it. Holy crap. Nice. All right, so it does start up that four ton air conditioning. It had a little struggle, but it did do it. And you can see the continuous running is 69 amps or 3,600 watts. Nice. All right, fast forward maybe two hours or so. I just got done installing a micro air easy start on my air conditioning, okay? Took a little bit longer because I was recording it. Don't worry, that video will be out soon. Anyway, what the easy start does for an air conditioning, it's basically for everybody that's trying to basically live off grid and run your air conditioning. You saw earlier that the lights really dimmed and the inverter made a little ink noise whenever it was trying to start up. Well, what the easy start does is instead of allowing all that electricity to rush into that compressor to start it up, uh, it basically kind of slowly ramps it up. It doesn't really do it slowly, but it's kind of like a timed release, all right? So it's not a, it's more of a, a, you know, a slower release. Now this is what I should have done earlier is brought the camera back here so you can see the lights dim, but I, you know, I was just too excited that it actually worked. Here's my cat. But I'm gonna do it right now. So I'm gonna control it from my phone here real quick. So let me go ahead and turn that on and then we'll watch and see what happens on the battery now. All right, I just heard the fan turn on. We're drawing 71 amps, 72 amps. No, it's on. It's on right now. And we are drawing, well, you can see it on the screen. We're drawing 86 amps. Holy crap, what a difference that thing made. Okay, so if anybody else is trying to run their air conditioning off grid from a battery, you definitely need to get an easy start. It doesn't matter what brand you got, at least I don't think it does, but you're gonna definitely wanna get one of those. Holy crap, I'm so glad I got one. All right, now that we're here, which I also should have done earlier is, we're going to run the stove and the air conditioning, all right? So we're drawing, well, 4,000 watts right now. We probably can't run too much, but we'll go one burner on high. That's 8,000 watts. All right, so we can't really do that. Okay, that's a small burner. We can run a small burner on the back. We're running 6,000 watts. All right, so there you go. You can run the air conditioning, your house, and one small burner in the back. That's on high, by the way. We just can't run one of the big burners. Let me see, let me try the, um, the convection oven. No, we can't do that. All right, so there you go. You can run the air conditioning and one small burner, no problem. And of course you can power a cat, no problem, all day. Boom, there you go. All right, so just like I said at the beginning of the video, I don't have any problems running the Condor Elite 3 all by itself or in parallel with two different sized 
batteries, all right? I don't have any problems at all. And of course, we did answer the age-old question, can you run a stove, air conditioning, or dryer? Yes, you can. You don't really want to run all of them at the same time because, well, it can't do that. You can run it at 7,500 watts, you know, and a little bit more for just a short amount of time. Now, there is a few other things I want to mention here real quick is I get a lot of questions asking if I can help design your system. I can't design your system, but if you go to Big Batteries website, they have everything in kits. Literally, they have it in kits that you can just pick out. They have everything in kits, all right? So if you do need an entire kit, for example, all right, we're just going to use the Condor Elite 3 because that's what we did the video on today. You can go right to their website and they have an inverter that fits the Condor Elite 3. It's going to be the 6,000 watt grow watt split phase inverter. It's basically the exact same inverter that I have over there it's just 6,000 watts. The reason it's 6,000 watts is because one single battery can only output 7,500 watts, all right? So you really don't wanna get a 12,000 watt inverter and a single battery that can only output 7,500 watts, all right? So they do that for a reason. On the flip side, if you're always thinking later on down the road, maybe you wanna get two batteries or three or four or however many batteries you wanna get, you could start with the 12,000 watt inverter, just like the one I have over there, and one single battery. But if you do do that, you just got to remember you can't go over 7,500 watts. All right, you would just want to run, you know, a critical loads panel, you know, and you could basically put your entire house on there minus your stove, air conditioning, and dryer, just like I have right here. Once you get another battery or more batteries and parallel them together for your increased capacity, then you can run your stove, air conditioning, and dryer, okay? Now, the last thing is solar panels. Everybody wants to know, you know, what about solar panels? Well, guess what? Now you can get solar panels on Big Battery as well. They are now offering solar panel kits, all right? You can go right on their website again and just get an entire off-grid kit, all right? So they have a kit that's 12,000 watts. You get a whole pallet of 30 panels, all right? Each panel's 400 watts. They're Canadian solar, they're bifacial, they're monocrystalline. They're like one of the best panels that you can get today, all right? You can go on their website and get all of that stuff right now, okay? Yeah, the initial cost is gonna be quite a bit. However, Big Battery did give me a discount code. It's 10% off and it's Joe 10. It's not required for you to use that or anything like that, but if you do, you'll save some cash and in doing so, I will get a small kickback for that, okay? Again, it's not required, but it's always appreciated because it does help me create these awesome videos. Which leads me to, if you thought this video was helpful, don't forget to like that smash button. I'd love to hear all your questions, comments, and concerns. And I will see you on the next one. Hey. And of course you can power a cat, no problem, all day.